this is part two of a hundred point video uh, that we are we've done now because we already one year on sisu and we had to do this checks so we thought we would share it with you last week we did the general points the category and lots of point covered there the whole we also covered a couple of points there below deck we covered a couple of points and also the deck fittings we did there also a couple of points and then we did um electronic components a pretty detailed one on all electric electrical systems and components this week we're going to cover the required equipment and in some countries there's also additional recommended equipment we're going to cover the head and the black or holding tank system black water system or holding black tank system so we're going to cover that we're going to cover the engines and not in full detail because that's a complete episode on its own we're going to cover the freshwater system how we did the freshwater system and how we flashed it then we also cover the galley the steering and then the fenders and dock lines the general thing that is basically then covering all of this check your sound signal for good operation it's working <laughs> just be careful people might think you're just going now a stern or something like that you're changing now to port so but <laughs> we're now in the marina as for the emergency equipment go through all of them and making sure that they didn't expire already you can see there's the expiry date so we're still good you have to go through all your flares and making sure that the expiry dates are still good so you have to open this up and look properly okay it's still good the pin is still fine so we are good there's a, a green thing to say this trigger is still operational so make sure all your, your things are good so check for corrosion on your co2 because this chakra is most of the time in the sea and also look for expiry dates okay and you need to replace it as for the required and safety equipment we've got this US Coast Guard approved type um, and just check that they are in general good condition this is another one for, for children and it's also looking good check your life ring and ours is pretty new but still check it of course it might not be good so it is fine yeah um, also test your light see my light is working not working working not working so it's good check your fire extinguishers check that uh, it's still green and the expiry date and service date is good so check that your fire blanket is good and accessible check and adjust the compass the compass some compasses you can change so you can do um, east west north south so you go on a northerly route and you look that you you go according to your, your electronic map your chart plotter on a northerly route and then you ch change your magnetic and make sure you you go the magnetic north of your of your chart plotter not the true north and then you you can adjust your north then you sail on a south uh, on a west east passage and you also mark 
where you adjust your uh, west east um, screws adjustment screws then you go on a southerly route and because you go now south you just turn halfway back of the error and then you go west and you also oh, you go east depends on which one you was before and then you also turn the error halfway back so it means then the error error on the north and south will both be halfway incorrect close as it you can get okay steam light on off yes it's working we need to, we need to check the deck light switch the deck light on off and on it's working make sure that your pilot books is up to date you've got the latest pilot books you can order the books from amazon also make sure that all your charts or the place where you're going to go to all the charts is up to date and charts do charts do change over time if you look at just the baltic sea it changed quite a lot what people think and now it looks like so make sure that you have the latest charts for the region that you're going to sail in and also make sure that you have the right zoom level of course paper you cannot zoom but make sure that you have the right scale and for that matter make also sure that your electronic charge is up to date if you have like us we have navionics you can just go to the internet and you can also check there what is your subscriptions or you can actually look at your expiry dates on the chart plotter itself and while you're there make sure to actually download the latest updates and put it onto onto the sd cards of the chart plotter we are also using uh, satellite ma maps and for that we use SAS planet and this is complements of MP catamaran MP they're using also this and you can see that there's various satellite images that you can download make sure your rod radar reflectors is, is ready and they good to be used um, we have several radar reflectors here so we have the and want to say we are under motoring and that's not to say we are under anchoring and we even have the metal ones that we also can make blocks so it can actually be seen from any direction so make sure these things are ready and and good to use check your medical supplies for first of all quantity and then very important is expiry dates so this one is 22 2022 so that one is still fine uh, another 22 23 no, so just check everything expiry and quantity You have to go through the whole medical kit, your grab bag, and with your grab bag and make sure that everything is not expired. Check your first aid equipment, everything that, that might have a, an expiry date and making sure that the expiry dates are not past the due date. If you find anything that's expired, make a note of it and replace it. Look at your live raft and also check all the expiry dates, whether you're good to go so then you know the expiry date is good. We're going to check the toilets um, and while we add it, we're going to check if our blackboard, the, the warning light comes on. So I need to block it off first. Here we go. And now we need to flash. Close the blackwater valve, 
here it is so we're going to oh we're going to make sure it is in the in the closed position then we're going to fill a black water tank up um, not too much but up and then we open this one so the water can run down and close it and then that whole pipe will be full of vinegar and that should do the job hopefully so here is this one's black water tank we need to open some of these things here and make sure that it is done check the operation of all skin fittings and valves and also while you add it check all the pipes and hose clamps and replace as necessary. Okay, I think it's enough. Let's see if, they, if it goes red now. Uh -huh. Flashing the fresh water system is sounds very complicated, but if you follow the, the not follow the money, if you follow the trail of the water and you think this clearly, it actually became quite easy. First is the mixture of the water. We have two 400 liter tanks. So for the 400 liter tanks, one 400 liter tank, we need to, and it's roughly a cup of, of bleach and um, that we need to put in is about one teaspoon per gallon. And that's one teaspoon per four liters of water. So we put a cup of um, bleach and it can be household bleach or it can be pool bleach. Um, depends on what's available because <laughs> many people is always in a nice marina where there's lots of um, shops and things but if you're an island maybe the island doesn't have these things so any of these bleaches can work they don't have pools on islands um, maybe you can get it from a hotel but some islands even doesn't have hotels or resorts it's just lost in translation <laughs> so you put the cup of bleach in it and then also we put in five liters of vinegar white vinegar so the vinegar is is important to decalcify and I'll tell you the reason why we put vinegar in as well. So it's not just a, a bacteria killer and so on, but it also decalcifies. And we're going to use the same solution to actually treat our black water tanks as well. So you you start with putting these these um, the cup in, and the, the, you start with putting in the bleach and the vinegar. Then you fill your tank. So you know now both your water, fresh water tanks is treated and all of the bacteria and algae is dead hopefully then from there you just start flashing your 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 system so you start opening all your taps make sure you open your um, shower and we have bidets your basin taps the cold water and the hot water from from your showers and your basin and make sure you keep it open until you can smell the bleach or you can in our case there was also a little bit of foam happening like the soapy thing but it was not soap it was the bleach so when that when you start smelling it switch over to the hot water uh, till it smell it and then go to the shower cold water open it up switch it over to hot water open it up until you smell these these the, the, the bleach or the chlorine and then after after you've done all the fresh water systems then you need to do it for your holding tanks so we then just fold we flashed we have a a, a fresh water system as well to flash the toilets so we switch over to fresh water and flash the toilets until the holding tank is full we also use our bidets because our bidets is also fresh water so we are actually filling the tanks much faster but that way we fill the holding tanks as well with this solution and we then open the seacock and let the water run the lowest valve of course open it let the water run till you hear it's starting to run and you know in your mind you fill it and as the as you think the so the, the solution is already passed the seacock you close it so then it means your whole line from the holding tank all the way to the seacock is actually full of this 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 solution and now the thing is you have to keep it for at least 24 hours so make sure you have enough drinking water in our case we just made sure we had enough rum and coke and we survived the, the day um, also make sure you have enough 
for cooking if you need to cook on about you need to drink on about let's wait for this heat as well all the things and throw the bidet oops open the bidet okay so we've done it now for the master and for these cabins and now the black water tanks after we've done that we need now to close the sea cock of the black water tank so that we can then make sure that all of the the jig water after that after the 24 hours what you then need to do is you need to um, basically drain all of the, the the solution out of your system so you have to open the taps and make sure that the water runs out and empty the tanks and be careful because the pumps is not always designed to run continuously for that long so give the pump a break every now and then take a break go have a cup of coffee in our case we went for a beer and come back and we drain again we went for another beer and then come back and drain the last bit and you need to drain both your fresh water tanks then you need to fill it up and as you fill it up now your tank is getting the, the bleach and the vinegar is diluted already a lot now you drain all of your systems until you don't smell anymore the bleach in the system um, or you can feel it also you can put your hand there and you can feel the bleach the, 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 the soapiness or the chlorine that's inside you don't feel it or you don't smell it anymore uh, you also don't smell the vinegar so you make sure that the fresh water is there you can actually taste it as well if you now to a point where you know you don't smell anything and then you need to remember again the same thing for every basin the cold water the hot water for the showers the hot water the cold water in our case the bidets as well we had to do that and the water maker i had to back flash the water maker a couple of times and you do this with the tank that's draining and we had to drain the tank three times then the water in the system was actually nice and clean and no more smells no more odors and we are quite certain all the the algae and the bacteria is basically gone hopefully and if you look here all of it looks good i don't see any any leakages here in the bulge and we have two ways of generating hot water one is with the electrical side and other one is with the engine so i just switched off the engine so i just had the port side engine on and we have to test whether the engine is also making the water warm yeah it's getting hotter it's actually getting quite hot <laughs> okay that is done and we also need to check the other side so i will start the starboard engine and test that um what water starboard side we switch it on there okay a little while later we have to check if the water did heat up mm. okay we have three heads and a galley so it is four taps and basins that needs to be checked so that tap seems to be driving perfectly and our plugs are in place 100 percent okay we need to test the showers as well not just the basins And it's draining. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the nasty bit is to check under here. Oh well, a year later. More than a year later, not too bad. Also making sure that you have space for
for the essential equipment that you need. Here's my anchor lift spare, so we even have that. And also, for example, all the water filters. So make sure that your water maker, all the filters, the different sizes and different types you have. And here is for my the PFD, so I've put all the spares for the PFD. And some of them is for children and some of them is for, for adults, so make sure you have both sets. And here's a little fire trigger mechanisms. So make sure you have spares of everything. <laughs> And since this is a catamaran, we have space for two sides. Okay, check washing machine filter. Uh, first we have to drain the water out. Well, there we go. So you clean the filter out. There we go. Place this back. Now we need to obviously clean our fridges and freezers. Check that they don't freeze up and that they cool enough or freeze enough and clean it. Okay, and we have two freezers, the one here and our 4x4 camping freezer at the back. And then we have two fridges as well, the bar fridge at the back, off cockpit and our fridge in the main salon. What we have here is the two bottles. And we need to just make sure that the lines is not perished, that our solenoids looks good, and the copper lines is good, as well as a major gas one. You will not be able to easily smell the gas because this LPG gas is heavy and they go normally down. And this is why we have that thing over there. So make sure that's not blocked, it's cleaned, and that if there's a gas leak, it will actually go through that hole and out to the sea. So that is actually coming under our hole out. Um, <laughs> under the bridge deck, it comes out under the bridge deck. You also need to fill up your cylinders, make sure they are full. And also check the gas operation. working let us switch it off here so I'm going to press the off button here and it stopped good so another thing that we need to do is test all the the gas for leak and check all the pipes is good and what I normally do is I just no 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 <laughs> We've got more than enough detectors. We've got one here to check our gas for any leakages over here. And then in all the cabins, as well as here, we have these little detectors. Okay, LPG gas normally runs down. Um, so we even have a sensor inside the bulges. We also have a, a barbecue. So make sure that all of the fittings is good, not rusted. Also not perished and no chaving was going on. So make sure that there is no chaving and it is still secure. I'm suspecting that the rudder steering is loose, the cable is not tightened. So let me go and see. The reason why I think it is it happened before and we fixed it and it happened again so i think there's something else wrong but if you look at the steering wheel it makes 
long turns to the one side and it doesn't make a short one it takes a long one back to the other one then a long one to add on so it seems like if he wants to just counter steer a little bit it takes a long while before it actually reacts so let's go and have a look inside the engine room this is exactly what I suspected the, the steering cable is loose and what I also saw noticed is that the fastness is not it's actually slipping so the cable is slipping not not stretching and I could do nothing now about that because while underway so while underway I don't think we can really untie the steering cable it might just go chaotic but what I can do is I can tighten it and then see whether I can tighten the, 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 the tensioner more I see this one is already tightened quite a lot, the tensioner is already, so maybe I should go to that side and see whether I can tighten it. But first, I need to tighten the fasteners. What I will also do, is to mark the position or the length of that small little cable so that in future I can see whether it moved again. Hmm. So as you can see now, the steering wheel don't make those long turns to actually stop again. Sometimes it just goes like this, a little bit back, and then goes this way. So it has more direct steering. So if it does make those long turns to one side and long turns to the other side, then your steering cable might be loose. Check that one out. Steering looks good. Maybe not too much play and it looks still looks very greased yep also looks good on this side okay steering we need to follow the arm the steering looks good nicely done and also the cables follow the cables make sure I don't have a problem. Our ends is still in, so it's not slipping. So also check inside. The pulley looks good. No chafing, no cracks. And if we move it from side to side, do we see any rust? Do we see any chafing? Looks good. My rudder angle meter. Okay. It looks good. Not rusted. Arm is fast. That's good. It's a lot of water in the engine room. Where do they come from? I can see there's evidence of water. There's evidence of water. And that rather post there doesn't look good. So I'm checking also the rudder. I don't see any cracks here. No apparent leaks on that side. Uh, looks good here. And also no leaks here. So it is it feels good. Not no water here. To, to calibrate a compass you need to do two things uh, one of the things is first of all you need to have a handheld compass and then find a place where it's not influenced by lots of metals and things like that get a, a steering direction so 
see that you need to point for a certain rock or a fixture, landmark on, on a certain direction for say north. And then you can see whether this compass and your autopilot is it's more or less in the same direction or you're heading that, that your chart plotter is showing. If that is okay, then you know the two is more or less in, in synchronization. But to, for your ships one, you need to also make sure that the deviation is taken in, in, in equation. And for that, <coughs> you need to sail according to your uh, chart plotter. You can put the autopilot on, say, north. And then you need to adjust the north the north-south screws on your on your compass to make sure that the compass is lining up with north. Then you sail west, and to do the same, change the north uh, the west-east screws then to go perfectly west. Then when you go south, you will see you will maybe be ten degrees out, and you half that, and you come halfway back to the error. Um, to the real course that is that is indicated so that you in any condition any time that you are 50 percent wrong in either north or south and then you go east and you do the same the halfway you're you basically half the, the the error so that is the way that uh, um, our manual for our compass say we need to do that i'm not going to show you too much now because i will do a complete video on engine checks because it's there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you do not just the engine check but also the yearly check the annual check and or any time before a long passage or 500 hours engine is almost the same thing that you need to do so one year 500 hours or before a long passage we will need to do this um, i've been caught off guard a couple of times that i think we will be sailing but then the sailing ended up in motoring a lot and then we went over the service time so make sure that you have service but sometimes <laughs> like we do if you if you sail for one month you might go over the 250 hours service if you do have if you do have the facilities to have a, a Janmar mechanic you have to do that if you're still under warranty but yeah I had to do it one time on the sea so either I have a certified mechanic with me while we do this long passage or do it yourself. Janmar wants you to then get, a, if you get close to a certified um, dealer or mechanic, then they need the mechanic to just check what you've done was done good. We are now here in Turkey and I actually got a Janmar mechanic here that is checking everything that we've done and also do a new complete service. If you have a generator, also check the generator. So I've got a provision for generator, but not a generator. So check your blower, check your water trap exhaust outlet, check your water inlets, they are good. And also check whether the starter box and everything is good. Of course, some of the um, inventory that you need to do, if you use a filter, try to replace it as quickly as possible. And I store mine here in the back. Spare parts. You need to look for your spare parts and that you, all your stock and inventory is there. And I keep all my spare parts in this locker here. So I've got spare oil, I've got spare coolant, I've got spare pumps. Um, even have spare belts. So check your spare, all your spare parts. So for every one, that every item that's very crucial in the boat, you need to have a spare part. Also ensure that you have spare lines, spare mooring lines, and that they are also in a good working order, as well as other spare lines that we have. Check your mooring lines. <laughs> in this case, we have Dynamo for mooring lines. Also, it rained. Um, so I need to inspect whether the rain was actually, it's a good time to check for for leakages and I check here. So I open the hatch and 
I'm looking first of all whether the stanchions is good and all of the way there but I don't see any marks or any telltales of leakages. Go check for your fenders. If you check for your fender, make sure that there's no scratches or cuts or any damage to it and that they are inflated because they, <laughs> they work best if they are inflated. Documents that you need to check. Check your passport. Um, make sure there's enough empty spaces if you're going to go to a different country or if you're in a foreign country. Make sure you have some empty pages. Also ensure that your, your passport doesn't expire within six months. There's some countries that require that your passport need to be legal and valid for another six months, but just check the country. Also check the visa requirements if you need to go to another country. Um, some of them need online application before the time, before you arrive. Some of them is visa on arrival, which is the easiest one. Others, like the Schengen and for <laughs> South Africans, we need to do a very serious application. So check that out if you don't need to do that. Another thing that you need to check online is whether you will need maybe cruising tax or you need to fill in a boat information before the time. Maybe you need to pay something before the time. Maybe you need to alert the marina before the time. Maybe you need to alert the customs or the immigration beforehand. So just ensure that those things are checked. So that was the under point check. Frick from Sisu, out of Iraq, out of Baghdad, signing off.